because politics can make us silent when we should speak, and silence can equal complicity. I have children and grandchildren to answer to, and so, Mr. President, I will not be complicit or silent. Based on previous statements and certainly based on the lack of support that he has from the people of Arizona, it's probably a good move. Do you think uh, the president's debasing the nation? Uh, I, I don't think there's any question, but that's the case. When he gets hit, he's going to hit back, and uh, I think Senator Corker knows that, and he's you know, maybe trying to get a headline or two on his way out the door. Pretty remarkable day with two Republican senators speaking out pretty aggressively against the Republican president, who obviously is trying to get tax reform across the finish line and needs those votes. Senator Flake saying he's not going to run for re-election. Senator Corker obviously wasn't already, but stepping up the rhetorical battle between the president and Senator Corker. Here's another senator about whether that affects votes. Reasonable people get mad sometimes, and reasonable people have emotions sometimes. And reason people say things sometimes they shouldn't say. But I don't believe one for one second that Jeff Flake or Bob Bill Corker or Bob Corker or John McCain or anybody else would allow their personal feelings to impact what's best for this country. And that's what I believe. And you can write that down and take it home to mama. Take it home to mama. All right, let's bring in our panel. Joining me here at the White House, Catherine Lucy, White House reporter for the Associated Press. From our Washington bureau, Laura Ingram, host of the Ingram Angle, which premieres here on Fox News Monday, October 30th, 10 p.m. Eastern. And former White House Press Secretary Ari Fleischer. Uh, Catherine, let me start with you. It was an amazing day as it developed. Started with Senator Corker on morning shows and then a kind of a tweet rhetorical volley back and forth. Absolutely. I mean, I think we're starting to need to coin new words for a remarkable day or unbelievable day. Uh, yes, this uh, we've been through about five news cycles already, I think. And uh, yes, you saw the president and a senator of his own party engaging in this war of words right before the president was heading to the Capitol to talk about what is a key priority for him and Republicans, which is tax reform. By all accounts, and, and his latest tweet suggests he had standing ovations and senators got along in that meeting um, and that it went well. There certainly was. I was uh, in the hallway outside the meeting. Um, there certainly was applause. We heard that. We have heard you know some, some folks talking about the meeting saying that it was a positive conversation. But, I mean, this is a tax plan that we still have yet to hear about key details on. They haven't worked everything out. We saw that this week, the back and forth about how they would treat 401k. So there's a lot of work yet to do. Laura, your thoughts on today? Well, I think that uh, thinking of someone like Jeff Flake uh, in his own state, uh, he would not have won uh, the, his primary challenge against Kelly Ward. I was there last Tuesday, and it was obvious on the ground there that there was just no constituency for you know his kind of open borders, endless war, uh, trade deals that are very imbalanced. There was no constituency for that. And I understand you know he's angry about the election. He didn't vote for Donald Trump. This is a continuation, Brett, of la last year's primary, and it's still it's still playing out. And the establishment's striking back, and I, I'm not surprised that they are. They don't like the populist conservative movement, and that seems to be what's gaining steam. And I say, you know, Trump, Trump's won most of these arguments over the past 10 months with the establishment, but he still does need them. So it's a, it's a balance that he has to play here as well. All right. Well, I just don't know how you can look at events today and not declare that Donald Trump won and Steve Bannon won. The fact of the matter is the people they like least, the establishment organizations inside, people inside the Republican Party, are not running for re-election because Donald Trump has helped chase them out of the party. But go back in time. It's, it is true. You go back to the primary, and, and 16 candidates, many of them cut from the same cloth as Corker and, and of Flake, couldn't compete with Donald Trump. Ted Cruz and Donald Trump got 80 percent of all Republican votes cast in that primary. The establishment candidates got less than 20 percent state by state by state from the beginning to the very end. And so now you are seeing that manifestation of it play out in the Senate. What I have a hard time wrapping my, eye, my, my mind around is they said you must fight, you must stop, you must stand up to President Trump, but then they don't run. It seems to me if, if you feel that fervently about standing up to fight, 
then you go through your primary and you prove that you can move Republicans to your direction. But instead of fighting, they, they yielded. And that's why I think it's a victory for Donald Trump. But Ari, let me ask you about these, these tweets and whether the pushback, you know, the counterpuncher that Donald Trump is, uh, is effective in this environment. Bob Corker, who helped President Obama give us a bad Iran deal, couldn't get elected dog catcher in Tennessee, he's now fighting tax cuts, uh, goes on to say that, that Corker dropped out of the race when I refused to endorse him and now is only negative on anything Trump. Look at his record. Um, He's pushing back, obviously, and whenever anything critical is said about this president, he pushes back. But in this environment, when you got to have to get something across the finish line, um, does that work? Yeah, but look what was heading across the finish line that helped bring about this end result with all these tweets. A New York Times story on October 20th came out that said Republicans consider sharp cuts in 401k contribution limits. The president then tweeted, we're never going to let that happen. No, we're not changing 401ks. And then Senator Corker advised the president, stay out of tax policy. Don't get into it. Frankly, I think this is where the president used a tweet on policy quite effectively. And he was hearing then from a senator, don't put your nose in congressional business. And I can understand congressmen wanting the president not get involved in the minutia of tax bills. But in this case, if the Republican Party had gone down that road on 401ks, President Trump's tweet probably saved the Republican Party from hurting themselves badly. And Brad, I think there's one thing that we should we should remember in listening to what uh, we heard today from Jeff Flake. Just if you if you didn't hear his voice, you just read it. This could be a speech that was delivered by Nancy Pelosi. This could have been a speech that was delivered by Chuck Schumer. Almost almost everything that the press is focusing on. It's not that you know he's the conscience of the conservative movement. It's the tone, the vitriol, this that he lost. His view of conservatism is receding. Maybe it'll come back someday. But right now, the middle class in America has, is tired of getting kicked to the curb. And if you're going to work for big business, then you might as well just go work for big business. So Jeff Lake should go work for big business. In the meantime, the people who are going to focus on the ordinary Americans working every day for a living, those people who turned out to vote for Donald Trump, you have to advance this agenda. And if you don't advance the agenda, and if you speak ill of President Trump more often than you speak ill of any, any random Democrat, it's probably not going to work out, out all that well for you right now. Yeah. So he's going to stamp his feet. But I don't think, I don't think it's going to make his viewpoint, his views, Brett, more popular within the Republican ranks. His Senator, views are unpopular. Senator Flank wrote a book called a Conscience of a Conservative, and it was pretty critical of, of President Trump. Obviously, that title uh, sharing from Arizona, uh, Barry Goldwater, who, went after he lost the presidential race, did stay in the Senate for many, many years afterwards and wrote ran again. I guess that's the criticism is why not run if you're standing up on principle. Yeah, and I think these lawmakers have obviously made the decision this is not a productive place for them to be, but it really does, I mean, what we've been talking about here and what we've seen today, it does speak to the divides in the party, which are not going to get worked out today. And how do how does this White House figure out a way to to work with the Senate while also, you know, trying to advance candidates that they see as being on their agenda?